<laughs> the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presents The Cavalcade of America, starring Gene Tierney. Gene Tierney. Tonight on Cavalcade, I see a woman who is suddenly in prison behind a terrible gray wall of silence. This is the true story of that woman and how she came from behind that wall. With Gene Tierney as Marie Hayes, the lady from the wall of silence. You never know when it's going to happen. You lead your life normally. You laugh, you sing, you go to a dance. That's how it began with me. Yes, there was a winter dance at the Copley Plaza in Boston. I was a sophomore at Simmons College. I was young and I was happy. And it was a big dance of the winter season. Marie? Yes, Marie? Hmm? Anyone ever tell you? What? The way you dance. Oh, Mary Hayes, you've got the cutest little baby face. Oh, no, not the way. Another one like Mary Hayes. Oh, Marie, not Mary. <laughs> anyway, let's not talk at me. Let's just dance. I love to dance, don't you? <laughs> Don't know why. Oh, I love sleeping, and I do know why. Now, shut up and go to sleep. You know something, Flo? The only thing wrong with tonight... I'm not interested. Was it Henry, wasn't it? Oh, no. Not Henry Heiner of Midnight. Marie Hayes in ten seconds. All right, all right. Oh, that's better. Good night, pal. Have you ever gone to sleep as I did that winter night in 1926? My flesh tingled. I was warm. I fell asleep dreaming of the voices and the music of a sounding world. Marie, wake up. Marie, come on, kid. Hey, Marie. Marie, what's wrong? Hello. Oh. Speak up. Huh? Speak up, Flo. Talk louder. Well, I, I'm practically yelling. Flo, I can't hear you. It's too early for jokes. Louder, Flo. I don't hear you. Why didn't the alarm go off? But it did go off, Marie. Mm-hmm. I can't hear you, Flo. Talk to me, please. I want to hear your voice. I can't hear. <laughs> Your roommate has nothing more serious than a case of influenza. But, Doctor, she can't... Yes, I know, she can't hear. Happens. The infection spreads. She'll get better. Now, just see that she takes these pills. Get plenty of fluids into her. Uh, Nothing to worry about. Not a thing. I saw his lips move, but I didn't hear a single word he said. When your ears have been busy bringing you the sounding world for all your life, the absence of sound, the abrupt, unexpected end of sound is like the death of consciousness. That's how it was for me in 1926. I got well, but my hearing had only partially returned. In order to hear, I had to strain all the time. It was like having to stand on my toes while everyone else was relaxed 
and comfortable. Just sit tight, Marie, darling. I'll fix you an eggnog. Eggnog? Yes, Marie. You need building up, darling. Do I, Mother? I'm really much better, you know. That's fine. Are you glad to be home again? What? Eddie Cleveland, a welcome sight again. He didn't say so. Mother, you did ask me if Henry Heiner was planning to call tonight. That's what you asked, Mother, wasn't it? Yes, of course, Marie. I'll have your eggnog in a moment. Darling, there's a new doctor in town. I hear you, Mother. There's really no need to raise your voice. Oh, excuse it, darling. I was saying that there's a new doctor in town who seems to have a national reputation as an ecologist. That means ear specialist, you know. Why don't you and I pay him a visit tomorrow morning? Now, Marie, just one more time while I strike the tuning fork like this. I place it here, like this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, Marie? Exactly the same as before. Not much different? None, Doctor. No difference. I think that will be all for now. She's really considerably better than she thinks. Wouldn't you say so, Doctor? Oh, yes, Mrs. Hayes. Only a slight impairment which will improve with time. Nature, you know. Turn up. Elevator, wait. Turn up this car up, please. Just a moment, please. I'm going down. Up, going up. Watch the door, please. Don't you dare close that door in my face. I'm going down. This car goes up. What's the matter, lady? Wake up. darling. Who's there? It's mother. Darling, I can't shout. The neighbors. Who is there? Darling, it's drizzling. I'm spoiling a new hat. Let me in. You can't come in. Go away. Marie. Marie. It's mother. Oh. Mother, I'm sorry. I didn't expect you in the hall. Oh, darling, darling. You were never afraid to be alone before. You live among friends, Marie. You don't have to bolt the door in broad daylight. You don't have to... How are you, darling? Fine, Mother. Just fine. I had become afraid. Afraid of not hearing... And not being able to hear, I listened increasingly to the fantasies of my imagination. I imagined conspiracies against me everywhere. I bid a heart. Two diamonds. What were they whispering about? Waiting for you, Marie. What was that smile for? What were they saying about me? Two diamonds, Marie. You certainly can be mistaken about a person you've known all your life. What do you mean? You grow up thinking a person is pretty quick on the trigger. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Have a little tea. Marie? <laughs> oh, you can say anything you want. Everybody knows she's deaf as a post. Every moment of the day, you die a little. But there are moments when you die faster. I pretended that I hadn't heard. That was foolish. But even more foolish, I pretended that I heard... When I heard nothing, I wanted to be normal. And a normal woman has two ears. Small ears, long ears, thin ears, thick ears, pretty ears, silly ears, but functioning ears. Ears to hear the sounds of the world. When the wall of silence begins to close in, One by one, all the shared pleasures of life are taken from the heart of hearing. First to go is music. The conversation of friends. The voices of birds. The drip of water. All that remains is the emptiness of vanity, which forbids truth. As sound increasingly left me, I went from doctor to doctor. 
Listen now. Now we shall try the whistle from this side. Pay attention, please. Did you hear that, Miss? Oh, yes, Doctor. Much better. Could you blow it a little louder? Uh, that was loud enough, Miss Hayes. What am I saying? Much better, Doctor. Miss Hayes, you didn't hear a thing. I am writing down a name and address. Take it. Go to Miss Elliot. She teaches lip reading. A woman is created whole. She has hands for touching and lips for speaking and a palate for taste. A nose is intended for smell and eyes for sight. Ears for hearing. We are created whole. For the world is a whole world. And now, now I was a partial human being. Shut off from the sound of the human voice. The sound of laughter. The sound of my own crying. Shut off. Have you ever been shut off? Then you know the fright of silence. Who's there? Is there someone at the door? Speak up or I'll call the police. Operator. Operator. There's someone at the door who can tell me. Operator. Oh, Mother, there's someone at the door and I can't hear. Mother, I'm deaf and I can't hear. I'm deaf. Oh, Mother, I can't hear anything. young American woman, Marie Hayes, has lost her hearing and finds herself in a lost world, alone, behind a wall of silence. Panic is also a wall. When the panic left, I felt better. And I hurried a little better. But it was a black time for me. And it was at that time that Henry Heine came and asked me to marry him. All right, Marie, so you don't hear. Henry, I may get weird. Yes. You can't marry someone totally deaf. I don't want to marry your ears, darling. I want to marry you. Hearing or not, hearing makes no difference. It isn't true. You have to hear. You have to hear what a husband says. You have to hear children when they fall down, when they're sick, when they cry. I was gambling with the safety of my children. My children's children. I didn't know. No one tells you these things. Yes, I became Mary Hayes Hyman. It was easy to be happy with Henry. He understood He pitched his voice to my knees. He spoke clearly and directly to me. He never talked to me from the next room or from behind me. You young folks have done this room up very well. John, what a sweet friend. Marie, where did you get it? Darling, Mrs. Lewis likes the print as much as we do. Why, thank you, Mrs. Lewis. I bought it yesterday. A real bargain. Marie buys only bargains. Whether she needs them or not. (laughs) Laughter should be heard, not seen. It's hard to share happiness that consists only of a head thrown back, smiling eyes, parted lips, from which no sound is heard. You can read lips for speech, but you can't read a lip for the cause of laughter. It made me lonelier than before. There was vanity on my side. And consideration for me on the other side. They meant to be kind. 
It was a cruel sort of kindness. Deafness is a progressive thing. It goes downhill. There are days and weeks of improvement, but they are a delusion. The progression is down. I decided to go to a famous doctor in Chicago. Uh, Rick Patrick, come here, please. Marie, you do hear a little better, don't you? Yes. I've noticed it. It's strange that you should hear better on a noisy street or in a railroad station. The noise helps, doesn't it? Forgive me, Henry. Oh, don't be absurd, darling. Forgive you for what? For all the crises. Oh, no. Cut it out. Forgive me for making simple things frightening, for making small things oversized, and for making quiet things dramatic. Henry, why am I so frightened? Donnie, I wish I could go with you to Chicago, but maybe it's better for you to do it alone. I- I'm helping, and your doctor is helping, but Marie, you have to do it by yourself. Grown people have to do things by themselves. Will you sit down, Mrs. Heiner? The doctor's face was kind. A little brown gnome of a man with a lined face and soft eyes and a leg that dragged when he walked. We begin, yes? Dick, D, G. Message? I tried to hear. Shape. I tried death. Horror? Rural? Moon? It lasted for moon. hours. This is a monocord. Listen. Now, listen to the buzz. There were beads of moisture on the doctor's face. And when all the tests were over, he sat facing me and not speaking for a while. Have you noticed, Mrs. Heiner, that I limp? I am lame. You are hard of hearing. Mrs. Heiner, that isn't the worst thing in life. But, Doctor, I live in a prison. My dear Mrs. Heiner, truth is a healing thing when you are brave enough to accept truth. The truth is that you will never hear any better than you hear now. It will get worse. Once foolish people groped in half-darkness because they were ashamed to wear eyeglasses. There is no indignity in wearing glasses, and there is no indignity in wearing a hearing aid. Henry and I shopped for a hearing aid. It was as simple as that. Does this sound better, Mrs. Heiner? No, it makes me dizzy. Is this more comfortable, Mrs. Heiner? No, I don't think so. Tell me if this is better, Mrs. Heiner. One, two, three. Better. Four. That is better. Take it home, Mrs. Heiner. Wear it. Try it out. It takes time to get used to. Don't be impatient. <laughs> <laughs> what do you look as if you found a million dollars? I have. Listen. I don't hear a million dollars. Do you hear it? I have to put in a new washer. That drip of driving me. Oh, don't just touch it. Let it drip. What a waste of water. Let the sound alone. I never realized until now how far I'd gone into silence. Let it drip forever. I want to hear it. All right, darling. I'll arrange for all the dogs in the neighborhood to bark. Yes, by all means. And we've got to get a new whistling tea kettle. Yes, Henry. And wear shoes that squeak and eat celery and snap your fingers and cough and sneeze and sing and yell. I want every single sound. I could hear again. For a week, a month, almost a year, I was drunk with thousands. And then I remembered that there were others. Others who still could not hear. Who were afraid. 
who needed help. All right. Call me a woman with a call. I went to the Cleveland Hearing and Speech Center. I began to work with the all-deaf and the half-deaf and the nearly deaf. I worked with deaf children. Mrs. Heiner, this one's name is Betsy. How old is she? She's four. Yes, and down. You're new here. When you're around longer, you'll know she can't speak because she's deaf. Hello, Betsy. Hello, Betsy. Put your hands on my face. Like that. Good. Feel the sound, Betsy. Hello, Betsy. Say it, Betsy. Hello. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, oh, that's fine. Again. Hello. Hello. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Well, she is a job, is she? She'll learn. I shouldn't have said what I did. You know, well, I just haven't ever thought about deaf children before. I know. Deafness can't be seen. It's invisible. Here, Betsy. This is for you. Take it. Good girl. That's it. Take it. Hold it in your hand. Open it. Feel the sound. The deaf are set apart. They withdraw into their own silence. But now they must listen to me, because I've got something to tell them. Can you hear me? There are between 7 and 15 million Americans who must be made to hear. There are children like little Betsy who are born deaf. They must be taught to speak. There are the old people. They sit in a room and suddenly it seems to them that the last door has closed. There are men and women like me. Anxious, afraid, lonely. They're prisoners behind the wall of silence. Seven to fifteen million Americans. Listen. I have lately come from where you are. And now I open the Bible to your place. And in that day shall the deaf hear. thing I would like to do now, not as Marie, but as Jean Tierney, and that is to bring you the real Marie, whose story we told tonight. And here she is, Marie A. Tyner. Thank you, Miss Tierney. If my experience has helped other people, I am repaid. Today, there are many organizations working among the deafened, particularly the American Hearing Society. Programs like tonight's cavalcade and understanding on the part of all of us will help shatter the great wall of silence that imprisons so many of our fellow citizens. Good night. <laughs> Next week, Cavalcade will present one of the screen's most irrepressible personalities, Mickey Rooney. Our play, South of Cape Horn, 
is the story of a boy who sailed the seas to discover a lost continent. Be sure to join us. Tonight's cavalcade play, The Wall of Silence, was written by Morton Wishengrad and was adapted from the book Hearing is Believing by Marie Hayes Heiner, published by the World Publishing Company. All royalties being turned over to organizations working for the deaf. The program was directed by Arthur Pryor. Music composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Voorhees. Your announcers, Ted Pearson and Bill Hamilton. Our star, Gene Tierney, appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox and can soon be seen in Whirlpool. May we remind you, when you buy Christmas seals this year, buy a lot. Thank you. Cavalcade of America comes to you from the stage of the Belasco Theater in New York and is presented by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Stay tuned for the Baby Snook Show, followed by Bob Hope on NBC. NBC.